That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Bodies, 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 the second film directed by Helena Rhine, uh, which premiered at the 2022 South by Southwest Film Festival and is being released courtesy of A24 on August 5th, 2022. What's Helena's first movie? Um, she's uh, at first an actress, uh, Dutch. She starred in Verhoeven's uh, 2006 film Black Book opposite uh, Chris Van Houten, uh, the actress that headlined her 2019 debut, Instinct, which I have not seen but does sound really interesting to me. Wait, what's her first movie? Uh, Instinct. Oh, okay. Uh, not, not the Anthony Hopkins Instinct. <laughs> I was frustrated by this film because I really didn't enjoy the first hour. And then the final 30 minutes take me somewhere that was, it was a decent ride. But I think I was so frustrated with the first hour that overall I didn't necessarily enjoy this film. I think I liked it better than you did. Yeah. But, but I agree with uh, your sentiments about it. But. but, you know, we were at a screening. So what, maybe like 25 people in there? There were more than that, I think. More? Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was one lady just laughing her ass off at everything. I... There are funny moments. I have a few written down, but um, yeah, this was an interesting movie. The basic story is about a group of rich kids. <laughs> My first note is how old are these people? Because their age range is like, they look like 20 to like in their 40s. Mm -hmm. So whatever. But it's a group of like rich people slash kids who are spending like a weekend at this mansion like in the woods somewhere. Um, one of them owns this mansion, like his parents own it. For a hurricane party. For a hurricane party, because there's an impending hurricane. So they all get there, and the hurricane hits. Mm -hmm. So a lot, uh, several things are have converged on this uh, evening. The hurricane has taken down the power, so there's no power. No electricity means no Wi-Fi. And then they, none of their cell phones have data. Mm -hmm. Then the person who drove the bulk of the people to this mansion, because it's like someone's getaway mansion. It's not their main home, I guess. That person got upset the night before mm -hmm. and left. So they don't have a car. And then the two characters who we're introduced to first, who happen to be girlfriends, they drive in. The battery in their car dies. So it's, this is all set up right away that, like, nothing is going right. So night falls and they decide to play a game called Bodies, 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 which is basically, like, kind of like duck, duck, goose mixed with, like, tag, where they all have to sit in the dark. Somebody, they decide, they draw lots and somebody has decided to be the killer. And so, yeah, they, they, they pull, like, numbers or whatever and whoever has, like, the marker as the killer... Only they know. Turn off the lights. And then that person has to go and try to tag someone. And the first person they touch is dead. So that person collapses in the dark and says, bodies, bodies, bodies. They, they're supposed to kill as many people as possible. But when you run across a body, that's when you scream bodies, bodies, bodies. And the lights turn on. And then everybody has to vote on who they think is the killer. The, the rules of the game are not well explained. They aren't. Well, it, it's, it's very like... Blah, blah, blah. It's so stupid to me. I, I, I mean, literally, I wrote down, this game is so stupid. So they play the game. Someone stumbles upon a body. They turn the lights on. And then they're supposed to figure out who did it. But with, like, with what clues? So they start arguing with each other and hurting each other's feelings. One of the characters decides to leave. Um, a guy named Greg, who's like a guest of the group, who's the one who, he's the most handsome one, but he also looks like the oldest one. Like he, he, He's a much, he's much older. He than looks like he's in his 40s. That's uh, Lee Pace from the Hobbit films and Soldier's Girl and The Fall. The handsome man is from, oh, I didn't recognize, well, I haven't seen those movies, so anyway. Oh, he's very good in Soldier's Girl. He gets upset and leaves like goes to bed. And then Pete Davidson's character, he's the one who owns this mansion. He also gets upset and leaves. To wrap it up, Pete Davidson gets killed or dies. They don't really know. They assume he's been murdered because of the way he's dead. Like his throat is slit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which, okay. So then the, you know, for like the next like 30 minutes, everyone is like trying to figure out who did it. And in the process, they end up killing. The first person they end up killing, besides Pete Davidson, is that handsome man. Be 
Greg is killed, yes, because there's some animosity between him and the uh, Pete Davidson character. And they find David. his, like, bag, and they see that he has, like, like a map with a house circled, and he has, like, tactical gear and a knife, so they just assume he's there to kill everyone. So they end up killing him. Then another girl in the party ends up dying. Like, we find her dead. So now we're left with four girls. Mm -hmm. And this is at the hour mark. And this is when things really pick up. Because the four girls are together, and now they're sort of like arguing with each other and telling each other what they really think about each other. Two more of the girls get killed, and we're left with the two who are girlfriends. The two who we were introduced to in the beginning driving to this house. Mm -hmm. They get in, we'll, we'll get into it, but they sort of get into a fight over a cell phone. Because the one girlfriend wants to see the other girlfriend's text messages because she thinks she's cheating on her. But they actually have Pete Davidson's phone. Somehow they have a hold of his phone and not their own phone. And they see the gag is Pete Davidson was filming a damn TikTok video mm -hmm. and playing with a sword and mm -hmm. accidentally like he's trying to open a champagne bottle with the sword and he ends up like slitting his own throat <laughs> like accidentally. And that's how he died. And then Max, the one who had given uh, Pete Davidson the black eye from the night before, in a situation we come to find out more about, shows up and says what happened. So Max is the person who had the car who left. For mm -hmm. some reason, he decides to show back up. Maybe he felt like he has to give these people a ride back home. He shows up, witnesses everyone dead, the end. Mm -hmm. Well, and then the two girlfriends remain alive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why don't you start with what you thought about this movie? I mean, I don't mind unlikable characters, and this is certainly a film that is only, only comprised of unlikable people. Uh, but I, I agree, it takes a little kind of... It takes a while to get going, to kind of get off the ground, because uh, it's borderline obnoxious. I don't know that I think then. there's a main character, but... Okay, so... The, the, the main character, I guess, would be the two girlfriends as a, as a couple. Sophie and B, and Sophie's played by Amanda Stenberg, who actually was kind of impressed by. She's uh, uh, gives a really good performance in The Hate You Give a couple years ago. Um, I think everyone's acting was fine, and she even was Pete Davidson. Well, Pete Davidson looks like a creature. He does. I think he looks like Dave Chappelle, kind of like when Dave Chappelle. I don't know. He's he's such an odd person to look at. He is. <laughs> I still I think favor those. Uh, youthful Beetlejuice memes that I see about Pete Davidson. Oh, maybe that's who I think he looks like, <laughs> yeah, Beetlejuice. He, he does. Uh, and then Maria Bakalova, the Oscar-nominated Maria Bakalova for um, the Borat sequel is B. Yeah, I, th I think I probably like those two the most. And we're supposed to, I think we're supposed to be most sympathetic for B uh, because she is the only like working class person and, yeah. and she's foreign. Uh, they ask if she's Russian. Like this actress is Bulgarian, but... She, she has a, a notable accent, and they ask if she's Russian. I think I wanted this movie to be, like, like cruel intention. Like, just like these rich kids in this mansion and being awful to each other. But the dialogue is never that, like, bitchy or fun. It's just kind of like they're just awful people who clearly their only connection is that they just are together and they all have money. And at one point, towards the end, with the four girls, when the film starts to pick up, it's not explicit, but I think I got the sense that, like, maybe we are told that the main girl who used to, uh, the, the, the black girl, the lesbian. Sophie, the one that's sober. And yes, and then Pete Davidson's character, they're the richest ones. Mm -hmm. But the black girl's, like, the richest of them all. And like, and which must be a lot because Pete Davidson's in, like, a baller ass mansion. Mm -hmm. So. I, I guess we're supposed to think that these people are together. Like, I just don't understand how they're together because we we understand that the other black girl is like upper middle class. So it's like, I don't understand their connection. The other, their, and, their ages don't, don't seem the same. And, but it's the other Jordan played by uh, Mahala Harold. She has, they say she has a superiority complex because she's her parents are really just upper middle class. They're not really wealthy. Uh, but she's the one that makes the comment early on about the champagne, about how not to waste it because it's expensive. And it, so she's the one that's kind of also very uh, economically conscious where the rest of them are just so frivolous about throwing everything away. But I... I appreciate the level of detail that went into everything, but I also was slightly irritated. Like everything that our attention is called to, 
you know, it's one of those movies where the window doesn't work on her land, on Sophie's Land Rover, and of course that comes into play. There's a pair of, uh, there's an orange bra and the corresponding orange panties are... Uh, to uh, explain someone's cheated on someone. Yeah, yeah like, like everything. Yeah, every little clue is like, hone in on that. And so that, that makes this film seem a lot like Clue. The board game movie that a lot of people seem to like, or um, Scooby Doo, <laughs> to me it was very Scooby Doo, yeah. or um, you know Agatha Christie's classic, and then there were none. I think it's just that the game is so stupid the way it's explained to the audience that I feel like for this because it's I guess it's supposed to feel meta that they're yeah. playing a game about who killed who and then they actually end up trying to figure out who killed who and then these vapid. I don't know how to refer to them. Like they're not young. Some of them not are not young. So I. But anyway, like and then they're obsessed with sort of like, because the one girl I thought they all did a fine job with their acting, but the one who is very like woke, the white girl. Oh, Alice. But she's also very stupid. But stupid. I I think I liked her the best. I like. Well, she has all the best lines. Because she's very wishy washy, and every time someone says something, she just goes like everyone's right. Like she wants to appease everyone, and she's. I thought her character worked the best if they're trying to go for that. And she's the one that has the day glow. Um, yes, yeah, so she's walking around with her little raver day glow stuff, uh, glow that, stick stuff. She's played by Rachel Sennett, who I also really liked in Shiva Baby. That's that. That's how yeah. I recognize uh-huh. her. Oh, then hold on, scratch that. I thought the lady who made this movie is from Shiva Baby. I don't know what Banana Split is. I watched that movie. Yes. Oh. I remember Shiva Baby, and I did like that movie. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I did like this lady, mm-hmm. and her vibe made sense to me. But then, like, I don't know. I thought Pete Davidson was distracting. I think the upper middle class black lady, her, just her energy, just straight out the gate, they're she's, all. She was fine. She's very sour. She because she also has a past relationship with Sophie. Which they allude to. I yeah. mean, right away, it's alluded to. Uh, like, like again, everything's just handed to us that. Sophie's probably like, she's done terrible things. Mm-hmm. And so then, like, we, I guess we got to find out what those are. And Alice is the one that has brought in the older man that she met on Tinder that she says she knows for a really long time, but it's really two weeks. And uh, and then Pete Davidson's girlfriend is played by Emma Chase Sweet Wonders, who's recently on Sophia, Sophia Coppola's On the Rocks, and she they keep saying is an actress. And there is Sophie gets really one really good line in there about because she apparently played played Hedda Gabler. <laughs> recently and they keep talking about what a great actress she is so she can't you can't believe her emotionality uh, and Sophie's like well I saw Hedda Gabler she wasn't that good in it, but. the person who they think is Russian what's her name uh, B B when she shows up to the house she's a little anxious because these are uh, like this is a new group of people and she realizes or knows that they're all rich and she's not so she's a little apprehensive and then she brings a gift she like made zucchini bread mm-hmm. and like wrapped it and then gives it to Pete Davidson's character, which they mock. Which is like what a silly thing to bring. Um, Did you notice on the dashboard of that vehicle they had leftovers and it was in a Whole Foods container? Oh, it was those kind of that level of detail that I appreciated. Before they start playing bodies, 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 they start doing slap shots. I did think that scene was kind of funny. Where they're hitting each other. Because they're slapping the shit out of each other. and <laughs> Well, that just shows like kind of the underlying animosity that they really all have right, towards one another. Right. They have no respect for each other. Um, it culminates in a moment that, it, again, where I felt like, oh, I do like this film. And I think it's what you keep referencing about the, the four of them really uh, letting it be known what they feel. And it reminded me of this Leslie Headland film from 2012 called Bachelorette with Kirsten Dunst and Lizzie Kaplan, which was a film that kind of has a moment like that where it's like, oh, all of these women hate each other. <laughs> oh, I know what I was going to say. I wanted this to be like if you mix Cruel Intentions with the movie Climax. Because Climax is yes, a movie... Of, yeah, because that movie is about uh, a group of like young, sort of like queer trans people who are all like doing ballroom vogue style dancing and then they um someone spikes their punch with like a hallucinogen so it's just like this night of craziness where that ends it let, let, like it's chaotic someone gets killed and i think the vibe of that i really like climax mm-hmm. but i think this film another note i have is that these characters we do see them drinking and using drugs like cocaine and that's some pills 
but they don't seem drunk slash high enough to be this chaotic. Sure. So then it just feels kind of lame and like whatever versus something like Climax where it's like the filmmaker did an excellent job like as the audience I also felt like I was in a like a fever dream like what is happening and I can see how everyone's like in a frenzy. In this movie, these characters get into a frenzy, which is a very familiar derivative plot line where people panic and start blaming each other. Mm -hmm. But in this one, it feels so lukewarm because they're friends. They're already like spoiled rich people. So they're, 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 they're just turning on each other in like a Karen sort of way. Yeah, I agree. And, and also, I don't, the catalyst, this game, it's like, oh, what, Emma says we can't play this game because everybody ends up getting their feelings hurt. And start it's crying like, or whatever. Yeah. why? Like, yeah, why? Um, and then when everybody accuses Pete Davidson of being the, the fake murderer of uh, Lee Pace's character, he has this, he, he acts like out. Like this a, violent he outburst. A temper tantrum. It's like, but why? But isn't this the game? Are we just supposed to say who we think killed someone? Who cares? And then I'll, like you're in a, a hurricane party and everybody's like shocked that there's no power. Like, <laughs> What did you Speaking of that, what an, was going to happen? You know what annoyed me? We get an aerial view of this mansion, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, like a legit huge, ma like Taylor Swift mansion. Mm -hmm. And then there's a moment where B is looking for a restroom, and they're like telling her, "Oh, downstairs to the right." And it's like it shouldn't be that hard to find a bathroom in a house like that. A house like that would have like 15 bathrooms. And Alice, that annoyed me that she spent so much time looking for a bathroom in this big ass house. Well, these, <laughs> these big dummies, like they lock Alice out in the storm and then she ends up crawling back through the doggy door. They lock and, her out as if like there aren't a hundred ways to get into this enormous mansion. And, and there are only yeah. four of y'all. Like, um, it, I think it does, it is well shot, especially for a lot of it being, you know, in the dark. It was shot by Jasper Wolf, who did some excellent work on a film called Monos, Monos a few years ago. Oh. I also so, like the sound, the score as well. Disaster piece. Mm, we did Marcel the Shell with Shoes On and a couple David Robert Mitchell films. The song had a couple songs I recognized. Like, uh, who's that one lady who's problematic? Uh, what is the enduring um, attraction to Azalea Banks? Azalea Banks. Two One Two. Yeah, that that's in the soundtrack. I, I like that song, but <laughs> okay. They, and they aren't really dancing; it's more just jumping around so they right when they so when they realize p davidson's character is dead then they're like well, well where because greg who's the next person they they kill because they think he's the killer they're like well he where where is he well he went to bed well we should check on him and they don't want to check on him i thought that was annoying again they're doing all these things that i think if it would have been better established that these characters are like high out of their minds it would make sense but they don't seem that they seem pretty lucid also, he, at that juncture where they go into his bedroom, there is a lot of just like lines of coke he left there. Like, how irresponsible. Okay, something I thought was funny is part of the reason they think Greg is the killer is because when his little girlfriend, like, introduces him, she says he's a vet. Like an army or like military veteran. Mm -hmm. So they're thinking, like, this person has combat experience. Of course he killed Pete, like, or the Pete's character. And then he has all this tactical gear. And then we find out she's like, he's not a veteran. He's a veterinarian. Like, I thought that was funny. Well, he's in very good shape. He so. is in very good shape. Um, there's a point where B... When B gets locked out of the house, she goes to the car, mm -hmm. the Land Rover that won't start, but she's able to get in because, ah, oh, we left the window cracked. And it's pouring rain because of the hurricane. She gets in that car and she changes her into dry clothes mm -hmm. and then gets right back outside into the rain. Mm -hmm. That bothered me so much. Why would you change the dry clothes and just get right back outside? You had, the rain? But how the, the uh, uh, there's a catalyst in there for her suspecting Sophie of cheating on her with Jordan because she's found those panties in right. there. Uh, so it's like you, there has to be a, something that gets her in there to look for it. I have more notes, but I don't feel like going through them. I think I can see people liking this movie. It definitely feels like it's trying to do something, which generally I don't like. I don't like when it's like crystal clear that you're trying to like do something. Like you think it should be more subtle. Was, I, I don't I, mind I, overt and I don't mind crazy. I just think that this was not that edgy i mean there are moments where like i mean there are moments of violence where like like when greg gets killed it's like oh but it was expected because they're literally like he's holding a knife at them and they're holding a knife at him but i just think like the overall premise just feels so like 
This premise is something we've seen before based on a stupid game that is not even well explained. Everything evol devolves so quickly, but then because I just didn't feel any tension. And then again, I hated these people. I did have a note about like when Greg is with the knife, I wrote down, I hope he kills all of them. But he does and he gets killed. So it's just like, oh, these awful people. I don't care if any of them live. I prefer they don't. And then them arguing with each other. It's like, because they say some pretty, I don't know, it just didn't invoke any like, oh, that sucks that like you're not real friends or that you really feel this way. Like one of the girls are making fun of her podcast and I don't really like your podcast. It's just kind of like mean jokes or sure i think that the film is trying to or the script i think is trying to do two things it's also you know showing that the the height of how vacuous these people are but then also kind of trying to insert some kind of grace in there and i i don't know that that really works uh, that being said i did like most of the writing in the screenplay by sarah de Lapp, uh who uh is adapting dorothy baker's 1962 novel cassandra at the wedding which i'm kind of excited for but uh yeah i i think it's trying to do too many things and that's why there's these kind of contradictory elements again like you mentioned with the drug use where there's there's they're just a little bit too lucid for some of this chaos to make sense and uh yeah watch climax Gaspar Noe's Oh, climax. Gaspar Noe's <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's... That, what would, think, that was my favorite film that year. What would you give this movie? Uh, three. You don't... You, I know you want to give it less. Go ahead. I didn't care for this movie. I'm sorry. I would give it two out of five. Damn, a whole star. Okay. I was so annoyed the first hour. I find... That it. when I find... When it finally hit... And it, the movie's not even 90... Is it 90 minutes? It's 95, I think. No, okay, yeah. So then the final 30 was okay, but I was so annoyed with these people. Yeah. In a way that wasn't fun. I, I feel like I'm attracted to movies with terrible, unlikable people. So I, I don't know. That didn't bother me. But I do agree that there isn't really any tension. And, and, and because you don't have any real investment, even for B, I, I don't like I didn't feel a lot of investment for her either. Uh, again, though, no, I, because her backstory is that she's lying about who she is. But it's like we already think you're broke. Like, we, we all, I mean, I don't understand the point of lying about because she we find out she's lying about being a college graduate. And having a job. Oh, yes. That part Because of we find out that she didn't get to finish college because her mom was sick with something. Borderline. Uh, borderline personality that part, disorder. That part didn't read well. And then, she ha and, and then when her little girlfriend met her, she was working at like GameStop. But then she got let go of GameStop. Mm -hmm. So then the girlfriend was dropping her off at the mall. And then she would just chill there because she had no job to go to. But I think like, okay, if your girlfriend is super rich and she's willing to date you while your ass works at GameStop... Why would it matter that you didn't graduate college? Like, you're already not at her level. I just feel like that was like, what is that supposed to make me feel? Yeah, I think that should have been sussed out a, a little bit better. or th th that, that could have been smoothed over into something really intelligent and meaningful. Do but you have anything else to say? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>